1992, Bellevue, Washington. Why do feminists oppose porn? Quote, For men, the meaning of a woman's naked body is life itself. Andrea Dworkin, Intercourse. Quote, Women find gratification in the bodice-ripping romances of popular fiction, which have an overwhelmingly female readership. Close quote. And more in David Jessel, Brain Sex. Black's Law Dictionary, Standard 9th Edition, describes pornography as material that the average person applying contemporary community standards would find that the work taken as a whole appeals to the prurient interest. Random House Webster's College Dictionary defines prurient in part as causing lasciviousness or lust and lascivious as arousing or inciting sexual desire. So pornography is about sex, obviously. Specifically, it is material that arouses sexual desire by sexually objectifying individuals and acts. Traditionally, we recognize only one form of prurient interest, that having to do with intercourse and orgasm. The problem with that is that it focuses almost entirely on the male gender, on what most men feel when they need what most men feel they need from women, intercourse and orgasm. Hence, we traditionally define pornography only in this context, with the result that we ignore most female pornography. Pornography objectifies individuals or acts within the context of gender expectations. If men expect women to provide intercourse and orgasm, what do women in the context of gender expect from men? Most women at some time in their life, and some women all the time, expect the same thing from men, intercourse and orgasm. But in our society, what most women expect most of the time is for men to provide a home, financial support, and status within the community. Hence, where male pornography focuses on female sex objects, female pornography focuses on what Warren Farrell calls male success objects. Feminists assert there is only pornography for men. Quote, There can be no equality in porn, no female equivalent, no turning of the tables in the name of body fun. Pornography, like rape, is a male invention designed to dehumanize women, to reduce the female to an object of sexual access, not to free sensuality from moralistic or paternal, parental inhibition, close quote. Susan Brownmiller, Against Our Will. While framing the issue this way has contributed much to the feminist effort to dehumanize and demonize men, it is also a myth they promote to obscure that there are many ways to objectify someone. Most pornography for men objectifies women sexually. Typically, you can't buy it at your local grocery store. Most pornography for women, on the other hand, objectifies men as walking wallets, and women can buy it at their local market in the steamy romance novel section or straight off the magazine rack. What men call sex, they call romance. Quote, romance is used to sell women on almost every single product, from cars to food. Romantic love makes the world turn on soap operas and in romance novels to hugely popular and profitable forms of entertainment that have almost half of America mesmerized, the female half, close quote. Sheila Eisenberg, Women Who Love, Men Who Kill. What makes pornography for men so unacceptable? Why are so many women disgusted by it? They say it's because the purpose is to ridicule and dehumanize women. Quote, the gut distaste that a majority of women feel when we look at pornography, a distaste that, incredibly, it is no longer fashionable to admit, comes, I think, from the gut knowledge that we and our bodies are being stripped, exposed, and contorted for the purposes of ridicule to bolster that masculine esteem which gets its kick and sense of power from viewing females as anonymous, panting, playthings, adult toys, dehumanized objects to be used, abused, broken, and discarded. Close quote. Susan Brown Miller, Against Our Will. This inflammatory denunciation of male sexuality springs from a sexist assumption men cannot feel sexually aroused without there being some element of ridicule or desire to dominate. I remember getting into my father's Playboy collection as a boy during puberty, and worship would be a better description for what I felt than ridicule. And the millions of purveyors of phone sex make catering to men's needs for intimacy proves anonymous panting playthings have little to do with why men pay for porn. Excuse me, that should have been. And the millions of dollars purveyors of phone sex make catering to men's needs for intimacy proves anonymous panting playthings have little to do with why men pay for porn. Another reason feminists oppose pornography for men is that ostensibly it degrades women. 
Quote, strip clubs further the image of women as objects of pleasure for men. Stripping may not degrade the women who do it for a living, who describe the feeling of power and superiority they have over their audience, but it does degrade women as a whole, close quote. Jane Doubt as well, women and rape. This completely misstates the real issue. Pornography doesn't diminish women in general so much as it increases their sexual competition. But feminists really oppose male pornography because it undermines the sexual power of women. A man who can see naked women any time he finds it convenient is not a man who is very vulnerable to the coy hint of cleavage beneath a woman's blouse. If he's seen so many breasts, so many naked breasts, that a woman who hides hers cannot use partial concealment to arouse his interest and thereby manipulate him, then she has less power over him. Power, however, is not the reason they give, because to admit it would undermine their efforts. Instead, they try to persuade us that, rather than being a symptom of larger problems, pornography is a primary source of problems. Quote, Pornography implies that a woman's inherent seductiveness justifies any sadistic and or sexual act a man wishes to commit against her, close quote. Dr. Susan Forward and Joan Torres, Men Who Hate Women and the Women Who Love Them. Women have no more inherent seductiveness than men do. Is makeup part of their inherent seductiveness? Is perfume? Are the thousands of different hairstyles in the big dollar industry of high fashion all a part of their inherent seductiveness? Men obsess about women's sex because generations of women have set themselves up as sellers of scarce female sexuality. How do women commonly attract men? With their sexuality and sensuality. Take this away and they would have to work to attract men with their personality and intelligence. This, as men well know, is a tough arena in which to compete for the attention of another. Easier by far for women to maintain their ability to employ their sexual cell by outlying per pornography for men. Feminists need to oppose male pornography not because men see women as sex objects, but to increase women's value as sex objects. 2015, Olympia, Washington. Since I wrote this, while feminists still get their undies in a bunch over the subject as their mighty slut brigades march around towns half-naked to the outrage of anybody but men, mainstream attitudes toward porn have changed so much that Playboy, which originally relied on naughty but tasteful pictures of women to lure male audiences, have now abandoned skin. It's simply too easy to find on the web. Nevertheless, feminist outrage has only been magnified by the emergence of the MGTOW consciousness. Few things enrage feminists more than a man who not only refuses to play the game, but is not ashamed. Several years ago, before I even started my website when we were publishing our zine, we called ourselves Shameless Men Press. Often, during radio interviews, feminist callers would challenge me on this. Why do you call yourselves Shameless Men? When I replied that it was because we were not ashamed of being men, they would invariably fly into a rage. To be MGTOW is to be unashamed of being a man. We are not ashamed to be men, and we will neither be cowed nor shamed into submission. We are shameless men, and we are MGTOW. That's all for now. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel. For the Backlash at Backlash.com, my name is Rod Van Mecklen.